If you've ever looked at something and wondered, how does that thing work, then this is the show for you. Over the next half hour, you're going to be fired up over the inner workings of a Navy fighter jet machine. Shocked by the technology inside a taser, flooded with all you've ever wanted to know about your neighborhood car wash, and bowled over by the mechanics of a bowling pin spotter. All that and more next on Guts and Bolts. Currently, we're outside a very nondescript office park in Scottsdale, Arizona. Inside these walls is equally unremarkable. Fax machines, computers, cookie-cutter cubicles. It might as well be your office. But open the right door and it's something right out of a James Bond movie. This is world headquarters for Taser International, a high-tech manufacturing facility for one of the world's most effective weapons, the Advanced Taser. Now, the Advanced Taser uses 50,000 volts of electricity to stop any would-be attacker in his tracks. How does it work? We're going to talk to Rick Smith, CEO of Taser International, and find out. Rick, Tim Beggy. Pleasure to meet you. Hey, thanks for having me over. Thanks for coming in. Hey, right off the bat, can I see how one of these operates? Yeah, this is the Advanced Taser M26. Mm -hmm. It's a less lethal weapon that uses electricity to incapacitate someone from up to 21 feet away. Hey, let me demonstrate on the target yeah, here. Yeah, on the target, please. Keep that. Basically, all I do is flip the safety up. That turns on my laser sight. Mm -hmm. Now, when I squeeze the trigger... Whoa! Happy birthday. Wow. So what, what's happening right there? What's happening is this is transmitting a 50,000 volt pulse through the wires and into our target. And if that's a person, you can imagine uh, what that's going to feel like. Mm -hmm. Your brain uses electricity to control your body. Right now my brain is sending electrical pulses to my finger telling it to move. Well, what we do at the Advanced Taser is we take that same frequency of pulse, amplify it, make it so loud that when this gets into your body, your muscles can't hear the brain anymore. Getting hit with a taser feels like hitting your funny bone with a sledgehammer over your entire body. Once the electricity starts flowing, there's nothing you can do. But after it stops, most people are completely back to normal within 20 minutes, unless you're abnormal to begin with. Hey, Rick, show me how this works. Okay, let's start with the heart of the system, which is the ballistic cartridge. Mm -hmm. This contains the compressed air, the darts, the wires. It's your ammunition pack. Really, anytime you're loading for a new shot, you just snap one in. Now, the air cartridge itself can really be split into two major components. I've got a disassembly here that we can take a look at. The inner portion, so I'll pull out here, this is the ballistic chamber. The ballistic chamber contains three elements, a small explosive, a puncture pin, and a cylinder filled with 1,800 pounds per square inch of compressed nitrogen. Pulling the trigger sends a small electrical pulse into the explosive and detonates it. This rams the cylinder onto the puncture pin, opening a hole and allowing the nitrogen to escape. The nitrogen flows through the bores and behind the two projectiles, propelling them forward at a rate of 180 feet per second. Can you show me the inside of the actual gun? Would you consider it a gun? Uh, some people call it a taser gun. It's technically not a firearm, mm -hmm. but taser gun's fine. Okay. Now, I'm going to open this one up. Inside the weapon, you can see the majority of the space is taken up by the batteries. And how many batteries do we have there? There are eight AA batteries. Now, how does that produce 50,000 volts? Well, that's sort of the secret sauce here as to how we get from 12 volts to 50,000 volts. And the secret is that uh, there's a thing called Ohm's Law, where when you have a fixed amount of power, power equals amperage times voltage. You can trade off between amperage and voltage, and that's effectively what we do with a series of transformers in here. Think of the power from the batteries as water flowing through a garden hose. You get a moderate amount of water with not much pressure. If you put a nozzle on the hose, less water passes through, but the pressure increases dramatically. It's this combination of low current and high pressure that makes the taser so effective. Now, if you have a criminal, he's being tased, and another criminal comes over and he's stupid enough to shake his hand, is he going to get shocked? No, he won't. The electricity is going to take the path of least resistance. So if two darts are on you and they're transferring through your body and I grab you out here, the electricity is not going to transfer to me. For example, if I take this probe here and I come down, even though I'm touching the metal, it's not transferring to me because the shortest path of least resistance is, does not include my body. Now, if I put one dart in you and one dart in another person and you're touching hands, now the energy to complete the circuit will go through both of you. 
but they have to be touching, obviously. They have to be touching. In fact, we've done over 100 people. I think 110 or 114 is the record. One time, one taser drops them all. And they're, they're all being shocked equally. Yes. How did you get over 100 volunteers? Uh, we were at a SWAT conference with a bunch of SWAT officers. Naturally. Yep, pretty tough guys. Yeah. They asked us what the limit was, and we said, oh, probably 100. Yeah. And they called us out on it. They said, okay, and they got 100 guys together, and we did it. And we've had over 10,000 people volunteer to take a hit. Wow. <laughs> Mind if we take it on a test run right here? Let's make it 10,001. Okay, let's fry let's my go. innards. Hold on. I want to see this coming. Let's go to commercial. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, jeez. 